Keep it farming with AIM Agriculture. This is AIM Agriculture once again. If you are new, just do the right thing. Subscribe, mm -hmm. like, share. Good things are coming. Yeah. This is just my age, you know. <laughs> and this yeah. guy is doing it. Mm -hmm. He's milking 100 liters a day. Yes. Making 4,500 shillings a day. Mm. If it's dollars, <laughs> it's forty-five dollars a day. Uh -huh. This guy refuses these things of being in the office and says, "Let me do it." Mm -hmm. He's doing it. Yeah, man. He has nine pedigrees. You know, a pedigree is like three thousand dollars, three hundred thousand shillings. Mm. Two years from now. Yes, man. Where do you see yourself? Two uh, years. Uh, two years from now. I expect my heart to to have grown. Um, I'm aiming at uh, over 500 liters a wow. day. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. 500 liters. 500 liters. Mm -hmm. Let's dive into the story. <laughs> yeah. And know the journey, mm -hmm. the input, mm -hmm. the hustle, the costs, and what it takes mm -hmm. to be like this gentleman in Bomet. Mm. Looking at where you started, yes, with the uh, one cow, you know the crosses, the traditional cows, yes, and now you're talking of having nine pedigree, is in milking hundred liters a day. What has been the the, the secret to success? Mm. I can't say there's a secret. Yes. Uh, all is knowledge. Uh, you only have to do is have knowledge, know what you are going into. Uh, so if you first do research, get to know what, what it is you want, uh, then you can just uh, go ahead and achieve it. So for us, knowing that we can't do a dairy with the, with the local breed, well, we had to go and get the pedigree. Uh, so it's just knowledge that you need to have pedigree cows to have a, uh, a zero grazing. Yeah, so that's it. Wow. Mm. It is amazing. Yes. I, I like the persistence. Yeah. Now, with your pedigree animals, and yes. at this time you have not broken even, like you said. Yes. But you're looking forward to breaking even. Yes. Now, milking 70 to 100 liters a day. Yes. How is the market? And what are the shortcomings? Or at the moment, could you tell us? Mm, I can say with milk, there is a lot of mal market like it's a, an assured business everyone needs milk so the problem is the price of milk for us farmers when we sell the the milk to to coolants or the first person who buys it they always buy at a low price and then when it goes to the market that's where it's high so if you can have a way whereby you get the milk you produce the milk and then you also sell it to the end seller maybe you can at uh, have uh, yeah, good money, but currently, let's say, giving it to the coolants and all, uh, they do get they are assured payments and all. You can't have your how you can't have losses, but uh, maybe it's uh, just slow. Yeah. How much a liter? Uh, here we sell at 45. Yeah, 45. Others can buy at 50. So it just depends. So 45 shillings. Yes. So you're talking of about um, 4,500 shillings a day. Yeah. It, yeah. To currently, currently, let's say even the 45 is good because long time this side of Bomet it used to be way less. It used to be even below 30. So coming up to 45 is a big improvement. Yeah. We, why I am why I'm not complaining. Yeah. 45 is just good enough for me. Wow. Yeah. That's great. Yes. That's amazing to hear. Yes. What has been your biggest nightmare, honestly? Like, you know, from the stories I'm hearing, or from the conversation we had, yeah. it's like you, you picture dairy farming as a very profitable industry, but mm. maybe I see a big challenge somewhere. Uh, uh, my challenge. My challenge might come with, uh, with the feeds. First of all, with the changing seasons, you can never know where, when to, to plant. Or 
when you plant, if you'll miss the rains, and the moment you don't have a harvest, it means the next year you'll be having a challenge with feeds. So mainly that's my biggest challenge. Uh, with the other things, I think um, I'm mainly, uh, I feel secure, like you can't expect, uh, uh, let's say, diseases. We, we really minimize on those. When we see a cow is sick, we, we, fe we, we treat it. So um, biggest challenge people maybe say is death. If, if you lose your cows, yeah, that's a big loss, especially if you bought them expensively, it's a big loss. But we try to, we try to not have that issue. Yeah, yeah. Wow, <laughs> I'm trying to... <laughs> just and just uh, somewhere someone mm. is watching us from america yeah another one is watching us from uk uh -huh. and others many from africa yeah these people dream mm -hmm. and dream and wish to have a dairy farm yeah please just tell them because mm. you've done it practically yeah what they should expect uh, what can I say? <laughs> um, dairy is not easy. Yep. It's not at all because uh, it's a 24-7 uh, job. Really? So yeah, I'm here up in the night all days. So I can't tell you it's easy. There is a lot of freedom, but when it comes to time of work, it's a lot of work. So what I'll encourage you is that um, if it's your dream, go for it yeah if you you'll you'll do it because it's doable everyone can do it especially if if you have a dream of having something uh, you'll you'll do and it has it has returns yeah you can't be you can't uh, be stuck you can't be stagnant if you need money you'll get you'll have the money you need because you can sell one cow and get some money maybe uh, but uh, i'm not saying sell your cows i'm just saying if you're doing the business do the business get the milk if you are going to uh, to do it uh, value addition do value addition yeah of course it needs extra costs to do such other things but when you have it now you start doing it you'll just keep going yeah this is a young energetic yeah, man. gentleman <laughs> with the Passion. You see, it's not, uh, forcing, it's not forcing it. It's just mm, coming from within. Yeah. <laughs> within. And mm. you are true. I can tell you that. You are yeah, true to yourself. Thank you, man. Mm. I have called people. Mm -hmm. I have written mails and emails to people mm. whom I see on Facebook mm. and requested to visit and learn because I'm a poultry expert. So I also want yeah. to learn from dairy. Yeah, even us, we learn from you. Thank you. <laughs> And let me uh, tell you, my viewers, uh -huh. please, 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 please. Mm. By the way, first, just subscribe if you're new. Just subscribe, yeah, like, man. and share. That's the only way you can support AIM Agriculture. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I was telling you, I've called so many people and written so many emails to people yeah. who are advertising very beautiful and very good-looking cows. Mm -hmm. But when we set the dates for the interviews, mm -hmm. those guys disappear in the thin air. Mm. So be aware, when you're buying a cow, mm. and when you're sending some deposit, know mm. whom you're sending to. Yeah. Your money might get lost somewhere there. Yes. These are the real farmers. <laughs> if you want to have a conversation, yeah, man. have a touchdown with such days. <laughs> it's a big pleasure yeah. having you. It's a pleasure having you too, man. If, which breed is this, and why this breed? Okay. Um, here we only have a fresh one. Uh, one is a, a daughter to a Flegvi, which is also a very uh, good producer. The reason why we are Frisians is because they really produce a lot of milk compared to most other, other breeds. So a Frisian will give you quantity and then if you consider going for, for the others like the uh, uh, Asia, there you will just uh, we'll be having quantity, but it will be more of, uh, it's thicker, 
than these ones. So that one will give you quality. Yeah, so if, if maybe you want to make cheese, uh, those ghee and all that, you'll go for the asha and maybe jase. But as we want qual quantity, so we went for, for frisian. Wow. Yes. Amazing. Yeah, man. Amazing and amazing. Uh -huh. Talking about feeds, and you've created this narrative around feeds to be like so, you know, involving. Like, yeah. how do you manage? Like, uh, how do you manage to have feed? Do you mm -hmm. store feed somewhere? Or how do you get the feeds to that amount? Okay. So before we started this whole project, we, we stored silage. Silage is the best feed you can have if you have a dairy, let's say here in Kenya, because I don't know about other people, maybe they prefer hay or other things, because every cow can eat whatever is available. So if in your area you have more of hay, you'll find those people prefer hay. But for us, I think we prefer silage of maize and sorghum. So that's why uh, most of our farms are, uh, we have planted maize and sorghum. Yeah, so with sorghum, it's easier because you don't have to replant it. Like after cutting down, you'll, it, will, it will regenerate. Wow. Yeah, so with sorghum, that's the ease. The ease uh, yeah, uh -huh, those things. Yeah. With, with maize, we have to keep going to the farm every, every three months to, to replant, uh, replant uh, plow, what, all those things. So if you can find a way to ease, uh, with the feeds, you just ease the way you get the feeds, then it's better, yeah. So that's that's on uh, the foliage. Now with the with the concentrate, we also formulate our own, like many other people who who have dairy. So most of the farms are visited. Most of those people also just formulate. So you find a way to have your best concentrate done that will give you the best milk. So yeah, we also formulate our own. Wow. Yes. So the, the the greatest lessons I've learned. Yeah. From you and what you're doing. Yes. And maybe our viewers, just to summarize this beautiful conversation. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> One is you have to do due diligence. Yes. Before going for the breed. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Then two, you have to come into the business knowing very well. It is going to be so much involving, that's day and night. Yep. And the hassle of putting together feeds and storing. So it's like you need to store feeds for the future. Yeah. And then maybe three, you need to look at your market. Mm -hmm. So that you know what you're going for, whether it's volume, uh, quantity or quality. Yes. And maybe the challenge Mm -hmm. Maybe could be price fluctuations, is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's another thing with dairy, I think. Uh, even milk, if it's dry, uh, if it's dry in Kenya, let's say it's a dry period, the milk prices will go up. But when it starts raining, the prices go down. Yeah, same thing with the, with the concentrate, buying of concentrate. When we go for maize, maize jam, maybe when the season of maize jam, it will be cheaper. But after season, it goes higher. So there is a lot of fluctuation in this, in this industry. Yeah, but with patience and knowledge, you drift through it. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes. How has been the journey like? Uh, for me, it's not so hard. Uh, most because um, I'm supported by my parents, so I get to I get help. Both of them do know agriculture; they do agriculture, so um, they have the lineage. Yeah, so I think I take the road quite easy. Uh, though it's it's hard handling them, but uh, it's not a big challenge though. You know, I can imagine, mm. if I was you, you know, at this age, you'd want to have, an, you want to be employed in a big office, sit mm. on the leather seats, yeah. tie, you know. <laughs> but you know, here, I see uh -huh. there is cleaning, you know, you have to clean here, yeah. and all that. Mm -hmm. It's quite, I see it's quite tricky. Mm. Like, you know, it's, it needs so much uh, psych, right? Yeah, it's a bit different. Uh -huh. uh, I get 
everyone is is meant for something uh, those guys who go to offices it's it's good for them uh, maybe it works for them yeah, for me this can work for me so i'll have to face it everyone has their hardship but if you find a way to tackle it you'll be good yeah where did you start how many like mm. how, how was the journey like you know? um say we first started with construction this this all place needed a lot of construction because mm -hmm. the foundation needs to be strong and these are muddy muddy clay soil. So uh, we started a bit far. I think in 2020 through 2020 and 2021, we are doing a lot of construction. So uh, in this year, that's when we started with the cows. So in January, we brought in the cows. Yeah, but we had other cows which, which were roaming around. Like two of these must be from, from one of the previous herd that we had. Mm -hmm. wow. yeah. And how many do you have now? Uh, here inside we have nine with the three cows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but outside there are around seven. I want you to give us a value of like, <laughs> your cow really loves you, he's right yeah. around you all the time. Yeah. What's her name again? Uh, this one's called Toror. So Toror, give yeah. a value for Toror. Just say, like, if you were to dispose this animal now, mm -hmm. how much would you sell Toror? Uh, now she's priceless. Okay, just, just... Uh, <laughs> For for a good you value. That one, eh? yeah. <laughs> it means like these these animals are deep inside your heart. Yeah, you see they love me. So how much maybe would you sell if it was to go to a market? Mm. I want to see how much how worthy are you, you know? How, uh, how much would Toror fetch? For Toror? Yep. Uh, I'll be talking about three hundred. Wow. Yeah. So when you talk of one animal. Yes. Like Toror going for 300. Yeah. And you see, I've seen an animal like. Uh, uh, that's Joy. Like Joy. Joy must be over that, honestly, just from the look of the animal. Yeah. And so you're talking about nine times 300, thereby. <laughs> this guy is talking about 2.7 million. <laughs> uh, like 2.7 million. Mm. On a good day. Okay, mm. I don't know. I've, I've not done dairy. Yeah. So maybe one of my subscribers or my viewers is like me. Mm. He hasn't done dairy and thinks of doing dairy. Mm. How is milking? Is it just like if you talk of an animal giving you 30 liters? Mm. Does one come into the business expecting 30 liters a day or how does it go like? Or maybe you tell us mm. on a good day, how many liters of milk you get and on a bad day? Oh, all right. So um, on a good day, We'll get up to around 70 liters from um, six, five, six cows, uh, which is quite low comparing to the, what we spend on them, because uh, we have to spend on feeds and uh, and a lot of concentrate and all those things. So if you try, if we try to do uh, balancing, um, currently we, let's say I'm not yet balancing the books because I have to feed other cows which are not also producing, yeah. But um, with time, they'll catch up. So we just have to make sure they are pedigree cows. And then when, when the milk starts coming, if they, if they can produce, if one can give me about 30 liters in future, I'll be balanced, yeah. So if you can say you want to start dairy, um, first of all, you must have good feed and then get a pedigree cow. So be very selective, get the best cow that you can, and then uh, you feed it well. So if only you can minimize on the cost of feeds and, and you get more milk, then you'll balance it. You'll be wow. good, yeah. Wow, we're learning <laughs> each day and each day. Yes. So I've tried to do my research. Mm -hmm. And dairy mm. has got two types of businesses, niches yes. as a farmer. Mm. So which one among them are you targeting? Mm. Milk or calves? You tell us. And how do they balance look like? Uh, 
I can say with uh, with dairy, we'll, we'll mostly go for milk. That's why it's a dairy. And then the reason why they're even inside is so that we can manage what they're eating so that they can give us the best, um, the most milk. So that's why they'll go into a chamber or such as zero grazing. Yeah. So if you get calves, calves also give you money. But say if you get a heifer, that should be more expensive because otherwise I can still use it on my dairy. But if I get a bull, it means I'll have to sell it. So that's where the business of selling calves come in. So if I, if I right now get a, a, a male uh, calf, it will be costly to feed it. So I'll have my expenses go to it and give it milk, which, which is quite unnecessary. So I'll, I'll now sell them. So selling of cows will just come in with, within the business, but it's not part of the business. The business you are doing is mainly milk. Yeah. I'm so impressed with mm -hmm. the choice of breeds. Yes. I can see like this animal mm -hmm. has just splashed milk uh, <laughs> milk on the on the bed. So maybe is there a problem with the animal or something? Uh, no, she has no problem. She's just a very good cow. Uh, by the time it's time to milk, she she is always releasing milk. So it's it's now time to milk her. Well, so it's milking time. <laughs> it's milking time. You milk them how many times? Uh, twice a day. Wow. Yeah. This must be just amazing. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you must have taken your time to. To do some research yeah and get the breeds like, yeah where did you get the breeds uh we went uh, hunting uh we went in uh, that side of naivasha there's a place called uh, kinangop yeah so we went just selecting because i think that side they have good fresh and cows yeah so we we just went selecting and from also other farms so we picked them severally yeah we just kept looking for the best and we kept picking them. Wow. Yes. You mean like, mm. I'm still not convinced. <laughs> <laughs> like all this time, you've uh, been in school, in university, mm. you've never thought of getting, like, you've never thought of getting any other job, like employment. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm a Rastaman. <laughs>